We unpack. We unpack. We unpack. Coming to your live box and ego unpack. Yeah. We unpack. We unpack. We unpack. Terrence Crawford trainer Bo Mack reiterates that he and Terrence Crawford not really interested in fighting Sean Porter because he doesn't have a belt, but expects Errol Spence fight to happen this year. What up, Fight World? It's your boy Ego, and I'm back with some more boxing. Make sure you smash the like button. Also, subscribe to the channel for the latest and greatest in boxing. If you want to become part of the gang gang notification gang, please hit the bell icon. Shout out to the Super Chats channel donations, the Venmo donations, the Cash App, and the Patreon family. We working. Sign up for ESPN Plus below using my link. It definitely helps the channel when you guys use that link. Again, in the description video of all the videos. Bo Mac did an interview with the Boxing Voice. Link in the description. And he says, first of all, it's all about what Terrence Crawford wants to do. And Terrence always said he wants all the champions. He was being asked about, like, why not fight Sean Porter? Bo Mac went on to say, Porter don't have a belt no more. So what's the use of fighting him? So who's got the belts? Manny Pacquiao and Spence. That's who we're going after. Those two fighters. He also says, well, Terrence has been in the gym for the last two weeks. We haven't sat down to go over his next fight, but I'm sure it's going to be for a title. The first quarter we'll do maybe April or May, somewhere around there. Bomack continues by saying that Terrence Crawford did a phone call earlier, you know, a week ago or whatever, with Errol Spence, and he was asked about it. He said they sure did, and they came to terms that they both want the fight, and they should be getting put together in the near future. He says, yeah, definitely that, and that's what we're expecting. I'd like to see him... Errol Spence have a first fight because after Terrence beats him, I don't want no excuses saying that he wasn't 100%. He says, I like that Bud is tweeting like that. He's letting everyone know that they can fight tomorrow if they would, if they want the fight. I like that. This is what they've been talking about for like a last year and a half. I want to fight Spence. He keeps telling me from time to time, I'm going to beat Spence's ass. We've been trying to get Spence since last year. There's been offers sent, but they got their own agenda over there. It's a 50-50 fight. And that was when he was asked about the split. If, if Crawford would agree to a 60-40 split, he says it's 50-50. I just want to knock the motherfucker out and I want to be the first to do it. And that was regarding the mean machine fight. That's why he did it. Still, there's ways to go about it, but it took him a few rounds to get him into his head. Once he got into a rhythm, it was a wrap. So I want to I want to kind of unpack this and talk about this. A lot been going on with Terrence Crawford and team. A lot was been said. I want to give you my thoughts. Listen. My thing is, I still, I, you know, on my channel, you know, I, I really don't have to say this, but just in case you're a new subscriber or something, for years I've been telling you Terrence Crawford is that dude. For years I've been telling you if Spence and Crawford were to fight, you know, that's the, the highest level of welterweight, you know, contemporaries. And I don't know who's going to win. You know, I've, I've been on record saying that. I really don't. I don't know who's going to win. Um, a lot of different factors, a lot of different ways to look at it. And you can make a strong argument for both guys winning, you know. So I haven't really picked a side, if you will, because I don't know. And I respect both guys' brands and, you know, what they bring to the table and their, how they fight. But that being said, I've always shown Crawford a ton of respect and, and love on the channel and exposure. Whether him or his team, they didn't ask for it. It's just I felt it's my duty as a person who covers boxing to show the world somebody as talented as Terrence Crawford. But I will say in recent memory, some of the stuff I'm hearing from team Crawford, I don't understand the, some of the sediments 
you know I, I really don't um this is not malice or ill will i just really don't like namely like let's say the sean porter fight like so one angle is sean porter their friends you know so i thought that was the reason but then this newfound reason that terence crawford's buddy was on the the live the bernie dude and crawford and they said sean porter ain't got no belt and then this is what bomac is saying as well so obviously that's kind of something at least from team crawford i haven't really heard crawford say it but you know people who are speaking on behalf and, and close to the situation they keep referencing the fact that sean porter has no belt and i don't think that's fair for the simple fact if sean porter the difference between him being a champion and not is pretty much a knockdown he was in an elite fight with errol spence last september right and some people even had Sean Porter beating Errol Spence. Sean Porter was really bringing it to Errol Spence in them early rounds. You know, some people thought Spence was losing the front half of the fight. You know, some people thought Sean Porter won. Some people thought it could have been a draw even with the knockdown. Some people had Errol Spence winning. It was just a fight of the year type of elite versus elite. Um, two guys didn't want to budge. And, you know, and that's how it played out. Nobody wanted to derive from their game plan. Nobody was going to let the other person break their will. And we've seen that for 12 rounds. So I think it's unfair to Sean Porter to kind of relegate him a two-time champion and just relegate him to like he's just some guy with no belt. I don't agree with that because he's not just some guy with no belt. Nobody that I've seen of the big names has had an easy time with Sean Porter. Adrian Broner struggled you know he had a clinch and stuff like that and hold for 11 rounds and not really too much engaged Berto was having trouble and then getting headbutted and I was at that fight and he ultimately uh, got stopped you know he couldn't keep Sean Porter still Errol Spence was in the toughest fight of his career Danny Garcia lost to to Sean Porter close Keith Thurman was in a war fight another fight of the year with him and Keith Thurman, this was like prime before all the injuries, undefeated, you know, one time Keith Thurman. Um, Pauli Malignaggi got ran through by Sean Porter. Kel Brook got cut over his eye, I think it was. And, you know, he had to tame Sean Porter, and it was still a tough fight. And, and Kel Brook was big, big welterweight, had a, a great jab, these types of things. So I think it's a great stylistic fight to show what and how Terrence Crawford can deal with that style. I mean, I think it's the literally the best barometer precursor. I would, you know, I don't mind Crawford fighting Danny Garcia, Mikey Garcia, Sean Porter, you know, Errol. But if he can't get Errol straight away with the car accident, you know, being in a horrific accident, I don't, I, you know, I don't know. I don't, I don't know what Errol's um, itinerary is because I'm not going to hold Errol to no type of stand. I, I just, I'm a human, you know what I'm saying? So I have a, a level of humanity to me. And I think Crawford does too. Cause he says when you, in, even in those rant tweets where he was talking about Errol and saying he's going to whoop him and smoke him and all that. He said, when you get back, right. So I think everybody in the game kind of respects the fact that Errol Spence is probably owed at least a tune up fight or on his discretion if he feels he can go straight into a major fight with Danny or Pacquiao then that's going to be him and Derek James's call I think as a guy who fought Mikey Garcia dominated him and had a war with Sean Porter last year and then got in a life-altering you know potential life flash before your your very eyes type of car accident you know he's definitely earned that there I don't think anyone at welterweight had a better uh, 2019 than Errol Spence. That's everybody included, including Crawford. Crawford fought Khan and, you know, Mean Machine. And then Crawford, this is just my my opinion, but also facts. Crawford, in my opinion, because I have to say my opinion because the referee didn't rule it a knockdown, but Max Kellerman, ton of people who watched it, they said it was a knockdown. I believe it was a knockdown. But Crawford, as Bomack was saying, he figured it out, you know, and he beat the man at his own game. Kudos to that. But it really should have been a knockdown. 
and he you know he had some issue in them early rounds and then the other fight was Amir Khan who basically started getting his ass whooped and gave up not really Crawford's fight or it's not his fault but at the same time we knew that Amir Khan probably wouldn't hold up and he's not considered you know to be that guy anymore in general especially Danny knocked him out brutally Bradis Prescott um, he's been hurt by Julio Diaz, hurt by Chris Algeri, and then Canelo brutally knocked him out with one punch. So, you know, and then he took a long layoff. So it was kind of like a money grab for Khan. That's how he fought. So Errol Spence has definitely had the best welterweight. Danny Hootie fight, Granados, you know, he's had it. Sean Porter even, he had a, a fight with you guys. A lot of people thought he lost that fight. So realistically, Errol Spence, like I keep saying, he's he's deserving of not just because of the accident, but because of what type of schedule he had. Nobody undefeated Mikey Garcia, who who's still rated, still fighting at Jesse Vargas now on the zone. You know, so he's still fighting at welterweight. We'll see how he looks there. And he dominated him every single round. I was at that fight. And then he fought Sean Porter and really beat Porter at his own game. So with that being said, um, I just feel like Errol Spence, he got to come back on his terms, at least for a fight or two, you know, definitely one fight. So why not fight Sean Porter? It's a great gauge and it's a great barometer. And as far as saying Sean Porter ain't got no belt, that's that doesn't make sense. Another reason it doesn't make sense for me is because Crawford, since he's been at welterweight, he has a couple of fights. And the only person he fought that had a belt was Jeff Horn. Jeff Horn is literally the only guy with a belt or a version of a belt that he fought. Jose Benavidez didn't have a belt, you know. Um, he had got shot and then came back, had like a tune-up or two, and then he fought Terrence, so he didn't have a belt. And Amir Khan for sure didn't have a belt because same thing, Canelo knocked him out, had surgery on his hip or whatever, arm, and then he fought Phil LaGreco, almost got knocked out by Samuel Vargas, then fought Crawford. And then he didn't have a belt. Um, who else was there? Mean Machine. He didn't have a belt. So, you know, I feel like that's unfair because Sean Porter, again, arguably beat Errol Spence to some people, or at the very least, maybe even with the knockdown, could have gotten a draw. If it would have been a draw, he would have kept his belt. You know, if the judges seen it that way, then Sean Porter would have kept his belt. And the type of fight that was, you might have been able to score it a draw. You know, that's not out of the realm of possibilities. So I, I feel like we can't disregard Sean Porter as if he's not a valid guy. You know what I mean? And then the whole belt argument gets further thrown out the window when you realize that nobody but Jeff Horn was the champion. You know, so that's unfair. The other thing is, truth be told, and this has nothing to do with Crawford, but politics more so i don't think jeff horn beat pacquiao so jeff horn really should have never been a welterweight champion because i thought pacquiao he 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 had a tougher than expected fight but he did enough to win for sure he almost stopped jeff horn and probably could have been stopped in the ninth round so sean porter he's still that dude you know great resume rugged style and i just don't feel like that you know, the friendship, I can't really speak on that because I don't know how close they are. But as far as what Bomack is saying and what Bernie said with the belts, I'm not understanding that. I'm not understanding that. And here, furthermore, here's the other third issue I have with the um, he's not a champion anymore. He don't have a belt. The only people with belts because Keith Thurman lost his belt. Him and Pacquiao consolidated WBA belts by fighting, which happened last year. So the only people with belts is Manny Pacquiao and Errol Spence. So if you don't fight Errol Spence next, which is probably not going to be the case, again, coming off the car accident, not knowing how the man is, at least next, I don't think Crawford's going to be next, then that leaves Pacquiao. And Pacquiao says he's going to fight March, April, you know, somewhere around then when he has uh, uh, duties from the Senate recess or whatever. And... Crawford, although he wants to fight Pacquiao and he's wanted to fight Pacquiao, they couldn't make the fight with Pacquiao when 
or not they couldn't they didn't they didn't make the fight with terrence crawford and pacquiao when pacquiao and terrence crawford were on the same label so how do you make the fight with crawford and pacquiao next easily when this is the last fight of pacquiao's contract with al Heyman, and then he has to determine if he's going to re-up retire go to the zone go to espn you know whatever whatever he decides that's i mean he's a legend he's going to make the moves he feels that is necessary but it just doesn't seem likely so i can understand aspirations of wanting to fight other champions that crawford has but in all reality most likely from what i'm looking at the only other guy outside of crawford because crawford can't fight himself for a belt right would be spence who got two belts beating sean porter or pacquiao who consolidated wba belts fighting keith thurman and to me for a march april fight that doesn't sound realistic so this whole sean porter don't have a belt makes even less sense because when we find out who Crawford fights once top rank reveals it, I feel like it's not going to be a title fight unless he goes up to 54 and fights Patrick Texaria or something like that, you know, but I'm talking about 147. If you're saying Sean Porter, you know, it just doesn't make sense. If you're saying Sean Porter don't have a belt, then the last three guys you fought didn't have a belt, you know? Jose Benavidez, Amir Khan, and Mean Machine. And Jeff Horn, as I mentioned, really shouldn't have had a belt. So that's three people out of four that didn't have a belt. So what's the point of not fighting Sean Porter now? You know? And then, as I just mentioned, unless you're fighting Errol Spence next or Manny Pacquiao next, then you also will not fight someone with the belt. If if they if top rank makes uh Crawford versus Amir Mom or Crawford versus Besputin. These don't, these guys don't have real belts either. Nobody has belts except for, you know, the real recognized belts are the guys that I just said, Errol Spencer, Pacquiao. So, you know, I think Crawford's team with what they're saying, they're kind of painting themselves into a corner with the rationale because Sean Porter is a great fight. I think it'll be a, a big prelude or a precursor to an Errol Spence fight mutual opponent if Crawford gets past Sean Porter then it's really on you know he doesn't have to fight every single welterweight you know people are going to want to see it but I think that would be because he hasn't had the opportunity to fight none of the PBC big guys at 47 the only guys he fought at PBC are John Molina at 140 I was there and then Felix Diaz you know but he hasn't had the big names with the big brands that are with PBC since he's been at 147, you know? So there's a couple kind of discrepancies with what Bomac is saying. You know, if you don't get Pacquiao, you don't get Errol Spence, then I don't see how you're gonna get a title fight unless you move the division. And then me personally, I kind of don't wanna see that. First of all, I don't even rate Patrick Texaria. He was, he was having a tough time in his last fight. So I don't know what they're going to do with Terrence Crawford, like who they're going to match him with or whatever. But I don't want to see him move to 54 and then have to move back down. It's just like that's that's too much moving. I want to see guys like move up once they've accomplished what they wanted to accomplish in, in their own division. You know, I'm not really big on that, like Kell Brook moving up for Golovkin and stuff, even though I think Crawford would beat Patrick Texaria. It's just to me that don't that don't make sense so i'm just a little bit confused you know i'm just a little bit confused because at the end of the day i i see team crawford being hard pressed to get a champion in their very next fight you know unless the the stars align and you know they can get spence the very next fight which i don't see likely or get Pacquiao and again if, if it's so easy to make the Pacquiao fight how's how's the Pacquiao fight made with two different networks but it wasn't made when Pacquiao was with top rank so either way I don't really see that being next if anything I could see Errol Spence fighting Pacquiao next 
or Errol Spence fighting Danny next. But, you know, we'll have to wait and see. Um, Bomack believes. And the other thing about this uh, interview is Bomack and Crawford kind of spoke with Errol Spence or Terrence spoke with Errol and decided the fight could happen. These types of things. And that's good. I'm glad that they talked on the phone. But just knowing the business and what I know about the business since being in it, it's not that simple. You know, it's not as simple as two fighters discussing something with no networks, with no representation of people who are managing and handling his career. And I know Crawford said, oh, you got Errol Spence, man down promotion. You're supposed to be your own boss. Woom, woom, woom. But I don't think that's I don't think that's how it works. I, you know, simply put, and I hate to be the bearer of bad news, but I just don't see how Terrence Crawford can have a, a singular conversation with Errol Spence. No Al Heyman, you know, no Derek James, no Bob Arum, no Carl Moretti, no Todd DeBuff. And then because the fighters aren't scared i don't think errol's scared and i don't think terence crawford's scared so because the fighters exchange numbers have each other's number and discuss it like i'll fight you and they're like all right fight me okay i will fight you that's not how it really works and we've seen this in other situations like gervonta tank davis versus ryan garcia the two were down to spar in la like i'll be in la hey i'm gonna be in la all right spar me all right i'll meet you on on a, on monday and we gonna see but as soon as it got big and and golden boy found out they put an x nay on it and they they blocked it and and stopped it from happening when tank was about to spar ryan garcia people were ready to see it and thought it was really going to go down but again that's not how business is conducted you know it's not going to be conducted on twitter or a phone call without any of the the guy's handlers you know because here here there's just different parameters i mean this is a common sense it's just different parameters so the only thing that the conversation maybe told crawford or spence is that they're down to fight each other but it's just deeper than that you know if al Heyman says hey no i got this other plan for you or the only way we can get pacquiao to sign for more fights is if you fight it. you know there's just different parameters things that errol spence might not know like i said pacquiao got one fight on his pbc contract so let's say he fights jose cito lopez and then he wants to renegotiate part of that renegotiation might include errol spence's name you know you don't know that and if if you're not errol spence he's not his own boss like floyd in the sense of he manages without a team you get what i'm saying so errol spence he he doesn't handle all these people's careers if anything he knows what him and al talk about but you don't know what how al is moving or what he's promising or telling pacquiao or sean porter or keith Thur you know what i'm saying you don't know what's what's next so that's just my my opinion on it i think it's going to take more than just the fighters being in agreement, and that's and I, I think that's a fair standpoint errol spence can agree all day terence crawford can agree all day but what about the networks who's the lead network you know just because fury versus wilder too an established fight before top rank is a thing with a joint that doesn't mean everything's going to be a joint you know you gotta you gotta figure those things out how many fights are going to be on the undercard from each promoter like this is just it's just stuff that's over the pay grade and over the head of two fighters you know who's the commentator team for a big major fight like that when you got two people from two different networks those things all have to be laid out on the table facilitated discussed handled and orchestrated it's not just like oh how's errol spence gonna um commandeer what what network does showtime get it does fox get it what what commentators are going to work with the espn commentators is it a joint promote you know it's just it's far too much if the fighters were in charge then they wouldn't even need advisors and promoters and they would just do everything themselves but this is why they have teams so i'm not really sold that it will happen in 2020 unless we hear a little bit more detail so um porter that's a good fight 
I don't know. I don't know if it happens. I don't know if Crawford's next fight. I don't know what champion they can even get for him. Those are my thoughts. We unpack. You know, it'd be good to see Heyman and, and Bob Arum work together on big fights, but I do have my doubts. And I definitely feel it's something deeper than just two fighters being on exchanging phone numbers and and kind of discussing that they're down to fight and the fight will happen so i don't think it's as easy as anybody thinks let me know what you guys think if you love what i'm doing smash the like button as always hate comment and subscribe till next video is ego signing off so if you enjoyed this video and want more content like this on the channel you can show your appreciation by going to the paypal donate button or the youtube support button and you can donate any amount that you feel is equivalent to the value of this video much more to come thank you guys for your support boxing ego the future of boxing.